an object is thrown downwards at 5 meters per second from a height of 60 meters. At the same time, a second object is shot upwards with a speed of 35 meters per second, and we want to calculate the height above the ground where the two objects will collide with each other. So both of these objects are in free fall. Once they're thrown or once they're released, the only force acting on them is the force of gravity. And so we have two separate free fall problems, and we're going to look at the position as a function of time equation for each one of these objects. So the first step is to set up our table of data giving all of the information about each of the two objects. For the red object that's thrown downward, it starts at a height of 60 meters. The initial velocity is negative 5 meters per second. The fact that it's thrown downward, we need to take into account that down is the negative y direction, so that velocity needs to be negative 5 meters per second. If we just put it as positive 5, that would be throwing it up at 5 meters per second. It has an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And so then we set up the same table of data for the blue object. So the blue object is starting at the ground at a height of 0 meters. It's thrown upwards at 35 meters per second, so the initial velocity is positive 35 meters per second. And it also has an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared, because it also is in free fall. So now we're going to look at the equation for the position y as a function of time for each of the objects. So for something moving with a constant acceleration, the position at time t equals the starting position plus the initial velocity v0 times the time plus one half times the acceleration times the time squared. And so now we're going to set up an equation for y as a function of t for both the red object and the blue object plugging in the values I have in my table. So I have the equation for the height as a function of time for the red object and for the blue object. And so to solve this, to find where they collide, I'm going to set those two equations equal to each other, and I'm going to calculate the time when they collide, and then I'm going to find the height at that time. As I set the two equations equal to each other, I'm going to drop out the units, just so it's not confusing with the variables and the units being mixed together. And I'm also going to make simplification, so the half times negative 9.8 is negative 4.9. So I've set the two equations for the height of the two objects, equal to each other. And so now I need to go through and I need to solve for time. And so the first step is to add 4.9 t squared to both sides. And that simplifies the equation quite a bit. That term drops out. The next step is to add 5 t to both sides. And so if I solve for t, I get 1.5 seconds. Now that's not my final answer. I was asked at what height do they collide, not how long does it take for them to collide. So we take this time, 1.5 seconds, and we plug it back into either one of my equations to find what height this happens at. They're both at the same height at 1.5 seconds. That's what we found by setting the two equations equal to each other. We were calculating at what time are they both at the same height. So it doesn't matter. You can take your pick on which one to plug it into. I think the equation for the blue object looks a little bit simpler. There's a little bit less that we need to calculate. So I'm going to plug it into that equation. And so taking this equation and solving it for the height, we get that the height is 0 plus 52.5 meters plus negative 11.025 meters, which if we work that out, we get that the height that they collide at is 41.475 meters. So this is a common problem to have to look at in physics. It's not always with two objects being thrown and where do they collide, but another example is when you have a police car chasing a speeder. And so you have a lot of these things where you're trying to figure out where do they collide with each other or where are they at the same position. And you do the same thing. You set the position as a function of time equation for one object equal to the position as a function of time equation for the other object. You solve for the time when those are the same. And then you go back and you find at what position they're at at that time.